Metaethics, Wikipedia article audio. Metaethics is the branch of ethics that seeks to understand the nature of ethical properties, statements, attitudes, and judgments. Metaethics is one of the three branches of ethics generally studied by philosophers, the others being normative ethics and applied ethics. Metaethical questions Semantic theories Centralism and non-centralism Substantial theories Justification theories While normative ethics addresses such questions as what should I do, thus endorsing some ethical evaluations and rejecting others, metaethics addresses questions such as what is goodness? And how can we tell what is good from what is bad, seeking to understand the nature of ethical properties and evaluations? Some theorists argue that a metaphysical account of morality is necessary for the proper evaluation of actual moral theories and for making practical moral decisions. Others reason from opposite premises and suggest that studying moral judgments about proper actions can guide us to a true account of the nature of morality. According to Richard Garner and Bernard Rosen, there are three kinds of meta-ethical problems, or three general questions. A question of the first type might be, what do the words good, bad, right and wrong mean? The second category includes questions of whether moral judgments are universal or relative, of one kind or many kinds, etc. Questions of the third kind ask, for example, how we can know if something is right or wrong, if at all. Garner and Rosen say that answers to the three basic questions are not unrelated, and sometimes an answer to one will strongly suggest or perhaps even entail, an answer to another. A meta-ethical theory, unlike a normative ethical theory, does not attempt to evaluate specific choices as being better, worse, good, bad, or evil, although it may have profound implications as to the validity and meaning of normative ethical claims. An answer to any of the three example questions above would not itself be a normative ethical statement. These theories mainly put forward a position on the first of the three questions above, what is the meaning of moral terms or judgments? They may however imply or even entail answers to the other two questions as well. Yet another way of categorizing meta-ethical theories is to distinguish between centralist and non-centralist theories. The debate between centralism and non-centralism revolves around the relationship between the so-called thin and thick concepts of morality. Thin moral concepts are those such as good, bad, right, and wrong. Thick moral concepts are those such as courageous, inequitable, just or dishonest. While both sides agree that the thin concepts are more general and the thick more specific, centralists hold that the thin concepts are antecedent to the thick ones and that the latter are therefore dependent on the former. That is, centralists argue that one must understand words like right and ought before understanding words like just and unkind. Non-centralism rejects this view holding that thin and thick concepts are on par with one another and even that the thick concepts are a sufficient starting point for understanding the thin ones. Non-centralism has been of particular importance to ethical naturalists in the late 20th and early 21st centuries as part of their argument that normativity is a non-excisable aspect of language and that there is no way of analyzing thick moral concepts into a purely descriptive element attached to a thin moral evaluation, thus undermining any fundamental division between facts and norms. Alan Gibbard, R. M. Hare and Simon Blackburn have argued in favor of the fact-slash-norm distinction, meanwhile, with Gibbard going so far as to argue that, even if conventional English has only mixed normative terms, 
we could develop a nominally English meta-language that still allowed us to maintain the division between factual descriptions and normative evaluations. These theories attempt to answer the second of the above questions, what is the nature of moral judgments? These are theories that attempt to answer questions like, how may moral judgments be supported or defended? Or why should I be moral? If one presupposes a cognitivist interpretation of moral sentences, morality is justified by the moralist's knowledge of moral facts, and the theories to justify moral judgments are epistemological theories. Cognitivist theories hold that evaluative moral sentences express propositions, as opposed to non-cognitivism, most forms of cognitivism hold that some such propositions are true, as opposed to error theory, which asserts that all are erroneous, moral realism holds that such propositions are about robust or mind-independent facts, that is, not facts about any person or group's subjective opinion, but about objective features of the world. Meta-ethical theories are commonly categorized as either a form of realism or as one of three forms of anti-realism regarding moral facts, ethical subjectivism, error theory, or non-cognitivism. Realism comes in two main varieties. Ethical naturalism holds that there are objective moral properties and that these properties are reducible or stand in some metaphysical relation to entirely non-ethical properties. Most ethical naturalists hold that we have empirical knowledge of moral truths. Ethical naturalism was implicitly assumed by many modern ethical theorists, particularly utilitarians, ethical non-naturalism, as put forward by G. E. Moore, holds that there are objective and irreducible moral properties, and that we sometimes have intuitive or otherwise a priori awareness of moral properties or of moral truths. Moore's open question argument against what he considered the naturalistic fallacy was largely responsible for the birth of meta-ethical research in contemporary analytic philosophy. Amongst those who believe there to be some standard of morality, there are two divisions, universalists, who hold that the same moral facts or principles apply to everyone everywhere, and relativists, who hold that different moral facts or principles apply to different people or societies. Moral universalism is the meta-ethical position that some system of ethics, or a universal ethic, applies universally that is to all people regardless of culture, race, sex, religion, nationality, sexuality, or other distinguishing feature. The source or justification of this system may be thought to be, for instance, human nature, shared vulnerability to suffering, the demands of universal reason, what is common among existing moral codes or the common mandates of religion. Moral universalism is the opposing position to various forms of moral relativism. Universalist theories are generally forms of moral realism, though exceptions exist, such as the subjectivist ideal observer and divine command theories, and the noncognitivist universal prescriptivism of R.M. Hare. Value monism is the common form of universalism, which holds that all goods are commensurable on a single value scale. Value pluralism contends that there are two or more genuine scales of value, knowable as such, yet incommensurable, so that any prioritization of these values is either non cognitive or subjective. A value pluralist might, for example, contend that both a life as a nun and a life as a mother realize genuine values, yet they are incompatible, and there is no purely rational way to measure which is preferable. A notable proponent of this view is Isaiah Berlin. Most moral epistemologies posit that moral knowledge is somehow possible, as opposed to moral skepticism, amongst them, 
there are those who hold that moral knowledge is gained inferentially on the basis of some sort of non-moral epistemic process, as opposed to ethical intuitionism. Empiricism is the doctrine that knowledge is gained primarily through observation and experience. Meta-ethical theories that imply an empirical epistemology include ethical naturalism, which holds moral facts to be reducible to non-moral facts and thus knowable in the same ways, and most common forms of ethical subjectivism, which hold that moral facts reduce to facts about individual opinions or cultural conventions and thus are knowable by observation of those conventions. There are exceptions within subjectivism however, such as ideal observer theory, which implies that moral facts may be known through a rational process, and individualist ethical subjectivism, which holds that moral facts are merely personal opinions and so may be known only through introspection. Empirical arguments for ethics run into the is ought problem, which asserts that the way the world is cannot alone instruct people how they ought to act. Moral rationalism, also called ethical rationalism, is the view according to which moral truths are knowable a priori, by reason alone. Some prominent figures in the history of philosophy who have defended moral rationalism are Plato and Immanuel Kant. Perhaps the most prominent figures in the history of philosophy who have rejected moral rationalism are David Hume and Friedrich Nietzsche. Recent philosophers who defended moral rationalism include R. M. Hare, Christine Korsgaard, Alan Schwierth, and Michael Smith. A moral rationalist may adhere to any number of different semantic theories as well. Moral realism is compatible with rationalism, and the subjectivist ideal observer theory and non-cognitivist universal prescriptivism both entail it.